Hey, my name is James, and you're listening to the TCR, you bitch. Okay, so let's start. Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Episode 79 coming at you live, pre-recorded from an undisclosed location. It might just be our best episode yet. We have E! News. We have Overwatch League, a lot of Overwatch League this episode, actually. We're just going to kind of give our thoughts, give our opinions. DreamHack Denver happened. We won't go too far in details, but a lot of winners came out of that. A lot of storylines. So we'll touch on that a little bit towards E! News as well. Uh, Let's get to this, though. The date, October 25th, 2017. The time, 8.31 p.m. This is a milestone in TCR, ladies and gentlemen, because not only is Brett not at the recording location, but neither is Anuj. Anuj, do you you hear me? Come in, over. Roger, roger. How you doing? (laughs) I'm good. How are you, bud? Is it weird not driving to my house? It or is. My no, own, like, I kinda, the undisclosed I, location? The undisclosed location. No, I do miss like seeing your face and being right next to you, but this is also like Aww. a nice little uh, change of pace also. Yeah. I would just it does thought, save some time. That's why Anuj sounds a little different. You know, if, if it doesn't sound perfect, I don't know. Let, as listeners, you will have to let us know if it sounds okay. Because I'm a perfectionist, so I will sit here all day and critique. But let me know if it sounds okay. And we have Brett, which you never know if he sounds okay or not, because it's just Brett. That's right. What's up, family? What's going on? Hello? 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 <clears throat> Hit us up on all of our social media, what all the cool kids are doing. Uh, we have Twitter, at the Center Ring, and our website, tcr.gg. That will get you all of our areas there. A little email thing if you ever want to contact us. Gives us information, anything like that. You can find all that on our website as well. Uh, also, and for those of you that are sending in those negative reviews on Tim, we are reading those, just so you know. We might not respond to them, but we read them. <laughs> and they just go right to the recycle bin. <laughs> also, I'll, I'll always um, I'll pimp this out right now. Uh, Destiny 2 came out yesterday, and I, I know we've said it before, but on our Discord, we posted the link. So if you are playing Destiny 2 on PC, um, or, or PS4. Need some people to play with, or wants people to hang out with, always feel free to join us yeah, for that. There's, there's people in there now. They're friendly. Just go and most say of them. Them. Most of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, for the most part, we're all friendly once you learn, once you learn the crew. But uh, yeah. no, yeah. So if you're into that, if you need a group to play Destiny 2 with, it's an open clan. So feel free to join. We're we're pretty much going to be on that quite a bit. Uh, but getting on to the show here. Um, so over, I guess just a couple days ago, this was posted on Blitz Esports. Of course, uh, Blitz Esports, they're uh, not a bad website. I think they're ran by the guy who did Esports Nutshell News, if anyone remembers that. He seems like that. <laughs> He's our uh, best friend. And um, oh, okay. so he did a interview, or they did an interview, with Richard Lewis and basically asked, I'm assuming the question was just, what are your thoughts on the Overwatch League, or do you think it will succeed? And Richard Lewis gave a very good, a very thoughtful, solid response. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And he did. And the way it started, though, he was like, all right, here we go. And I I, I just kind of cringed a little bit like, oh, God, this is going to be bad. But well, it, it was he's, insightful. He's kind of been out and said it before. This is the most insightful and thought out response I've heard him say of it. Normally, it's. He's a lot I, more outlandish when he speaks about it. Yeah. yeah. And I guess I this always was just, a little bit more of the PG version. I always got the vibe but, that anytime he said anything before it was kind of just, he just didn't like the fact that it was like an organized league. Right. Cause so every, any, t- but, and anyone does this, they compare it back to riot and how they handle league of legends, which is really frowned upon. Uh, but this yeah. one was very thought out. He, I thought he made a lot of good points that I somewhat agree with. And some that I don't necessarily agree with one big thing that he, 
Um, I think one of the big themes of this was the risk involved as investors, right? And that's one thing he like, – he, and he even said himself that if they ever asked him for his opinion, he would tell people not to invest $20 million into it. Mm-hmm. Because for the most part, it's an unknown – it's an unknown uh, – what am I looking for? Like an unknown result, no, I mean, right? I mean, it's even, never I, been done before. Not, not even for the most part, it is. I mean, it is unknown. This is this is something brand new to esports. The way that they're running this league, how there's one season, how you know the structure, uh, you know, it, it's different. It's just way, way different. So you know, there's just that there is an unknown. And I know on the show, Brett and I have been pretty much uh, supporters of Overwatch League. We both. In general, I think it's going to succeed. Now, what is your definition of succeeding? I guess that's completely up to you, right? Right. Uh, if you ask Blizzard, they'd probably tell you Heroes of the Storm succeeded in the esports scene, you know? Uh, but if you ask anyone that watches esports, they'd probably ask you what the hell Heroes of the Storm is, right? <laughs> so and it, he kind of used them as an example too, right? Well, it's just all like, of Blizzard's uh, games. Oh, he's used all yeah. of Blizzard's games, and he Starcraft. He, yeah, Starcraft and, is so frowned upon with how it's handled. Well, and it's just the way Blizzard has always handled their their respective games and esports. Richard Lewis went on to mention that they were kind of it, it, this is all by accident, right? Blizzard, mm-hmm. and what he means, I I think accident might be the wrong word, but I think yeah, it's never been the focus. So. It's not that games have worked out to be like good esports games, but that was probably not their intention going into exactly. the game. Like, hey, how do they we never, make this amazing they, esport game? They never have once made a game and thought this will be the next big esport. Even when Overwatch came out, and I mean, there might be some people at Blizzard that thought it, but it was still let's make a good game first that people want to play, and then if it if it takes off, then we'll figure out balancing issues and all that, which. In any game, Blizzard has not been good about balancing, which we see this in Overwatch, where they they over tweak rather than just trying to let people right. figure out how to beat the system or get around things. Blizzard has an issue with if there's a meta for a like a two or three week period, that's too long. If if there is any type of cookie cutter meta in Overwatch, it's too much for Blizzard, and they immediately want to to mix it up by a rebalance, whether or not it's warranted, who knows? And that's, that's one, that's one area where he brings up a good point, how the game's really not polished in that area. Um, more to your point, they're, they're, they're forever tweaking the game and they want every character to be relevant. I mean, they're just changing too much. And that was his point. You know, you don't even have a polished game yet. You know, you have a balance expecting game, this to right? kind of take off, right? So, but you know, I, I think they're slowly starting to figure this out. I mean, there's a few more tweaks that they can make to make it more balanced, but you know, you know, I don't think they're too far off. I mean, there are some glaring things that jump out like mercy, but you know, they're they're not that far off. If they just listen to the pros, they'll be in a good spot. Yeah, I don't think that's who they built the game for either, right? Like, I don't think the intention, again, like we just mentioned, the intention of them was to build an amazing esports game in this case. Like, this game appeals to the masses. That's why there are 20 million plus players in this game. It's because the game is built to be focused to the masses at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, let me start off with saying I, I love Blizzard as a company. They're one of the few game development companies that I feel like gives you the full game, right? Like even their loot box system in Overwatch, I feel like it's still a friend, much friendlier version of like getting money from your your fan base without like not giving anything in return. So as a whole, I love Blizzard. I, I do agree with Richard Lewis and a lot of his points that he made though. Um, one thing that you haven't seen is it, it doesn't feel that natural. Like it does feel like a lot of this is forced upon the community. Um, in terms of making it an eSport. Like, again, I still feel like, to me, and this is my opinion on this, I mean, I know you both disagree, I feel like it's more of a, a casual play style for a game because I find it very hard to watch as a viewer. I watch a lot of eSports in general, right? But, like, I feel like Overwatch, I just find it very difficult from a viewership standpoint. And that's just as important as 
you know, how the playability of the, of the game is also. Yeah, I think when it comes to like viewership and everything like that, I always try. I mean, I understand some games are going to be more, they're going to be simpler to watch than others. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it, it, there's, there's a, when, it, when discussing this, and we kind of talked about it in our pre-show meetings, is that it almost seems like if you like Overwatch, if you play Overwatch, then you're excited and you you could see it being a successful venture. And if you don't play it, that's where they can kind of come into play. I think on, on both sides, you have arguments. Mm-hmm. I see where this, like how Anuj, you said, like you felt like this was kind of forced, right? Like... Yeah, it wasn't a it natural feel organic. growth, right? It doesn't feel organic. I agree with you in this in that mainly because that's kind of Blizzard's mo, right? I mean, case in point, StarCraft Two, the like that game should, for the most part, everyone kind of considers it dead, right? As far as from where it once stood was like the top esports, right? It was like one of the premier games to watch and play. And now the only reason, in my opinion, like that and Heroes of the Storm is even around anymore is because Blizzard has this just mass amounts of money to dump into these games and never actually call it quits. And as long as they don't ever call it a quits, they're going to be fine with that. But I think Blizzard's okay with that. You know, I think Blizzard is kind of one of these quantity over quality type of companies yeah. when it comes to their esports anyways yeah. with starcraft it's a little different in, in my opinion because it's also one of the only good rts's left out there you know so even just by a process of elimination they have really no competition there and then even heroes of the storm i mean heroes of the storm even though it's classified as a moba do any of y'all feel like it's a true moba you know like I mean, seeing and playing other mobas i don't feel like it is i mean so it's kind of its own little genre That'll survive, but I don't think it'll excel. No, because the people the the people that are into that, I mean, they kind of like I feel look down on the game because it's not as in depth as a uh, Dota. It's considered, and it's yeah, easy. Yes, yeah. it's, it's uh, it's kind of a MOBA with training wheels, if you will, because it's a lot more team oriented. So if you have good teammates, maybe you can cover up poor play, right? Or you don't have to know every you know. There's no items or anything like that. But again, though, to bring it back to your point of like excelling, I think Blizzard is okay with not excelling. I don't think Blizzard, when they start this, they're like, okay, we're going to knock out Dota or, or Counter Strike as far as being a top esport. And I guess that's why when I'm looking at this as a success, I'm I could see it for like your average match, like in regular season, twenty thousand viewers. Like to start, I think that's what you're you're probably going to see, um, and realistically, I mean, look at ESL Pro League. That's about your average viewership for an ESL Pro League game on YouTube. Yeah, the difference is they're not asking for twenty million to be involved, so I think the expectations are going to be significantly different than it would be, you know, for a Counter Strike. And Counter Strike, you can have five guys get together, go unsponsored, and carry yourself to a major if you're good enough to do it. Right in this. You know, these teams had to invest twenty million to get a, a piece of even a chance at the piece of the pie, and so I think the expectations going into this game versus other Blizzard like ventures is is going to be completely different. Yeah, it, I feel like I think it's going to be more than twenty thousand, and and this is why there's three things that you need for this thing to work out for a brand new league hype, which they have right. We've been, you know biting at the bit for this this league to start forever now yeah. there's one w- and star power you you have to have star power which they have yeah you know and and players like sinatra and siegel and and the third is is it enjoyable to watch which i think they're getting better at um i really don't think it's still there but it, it's getting it's getting a little bit better from a from a viewership standpoint i'm really um, anxious to I'm, see with uh, our buddy Alchemist now being like the lead guy as far as 
being in the Overwatch League, he's like the lead guy who works with Blizzard on, hey, how can we make this easier to watch type of job? I think that's what he does. And it's in good hands. Like, yeah, I, and, and he's like the best hire they could have made because he's come from success, right? Like, well, and he's come from dude. other backgrounds, right? He's done World of Warcraft. He's done Counter-Strike. He's done Overwatch. He's done all of that's that. That's what I'm before. saying. Gen- generally, what he's involved with is a successful operation, right? Like Counter-Strike especially. Like he's, he's helped evolve yeah, that phenomenal viewing. With yeah yeah i mean it's just it's just fantastic so like i think that's they've hired the right people blizzard is saying all the right things it's just will you know now the other half is dependent not on what blizzard does it's how the the fan base reacts to it right and so that's where i'm concerned is i don't mm. think i think blizzard's doing everything I, that they can they really so, you know seem like they are other than so I, I think starting late but mm. Yeah, I, I think I think right out of the gate, I think they're going to have really, really high viewer counts. And how they do on on day one, that's going to be so important because if they just totally, you know, fail production values bad, you know, no one's going to come back and watch week two. So week one is very important. Like if you they're going to have the viewership, I think it, it's going to be it's going to be massive because of, you know, the hype surrounded around it. But they have to like get people hooked day one. There's a few or, things that. To your point, it's going to be more around uh, twenty thousand. There's a few things that I wish I I would have seen Blizzard do prior to this point now because we're basically in crunch time, right? Like it's the ship has Two sailed. Away at this yeah, point, yeah, right. It's the ship has sailed. We're honestly just waiting for this to start to see how it's handled. I wish I would have seen something more so in game to support it. Right. Mm. I was wish. Yeah. And maybe there will be when the season starts. Who knows? Maybe they'll do a giant Overwatch League update with the skins and everything. And on the home page, yeah. they have an Overwatch League l- section in Overwatch that I can click and see the schedules, see leaderboards, see right. stats. But I want that in game because that's where you're going to get people to see it and notice it. I mean, if it's on the website, that's even better. But in game right. is where you're going to get. But those it's where casual, you'll get the casual fan to watch right. it, right? And you, yeah, you exactly. need the casual fan viewership there's, for this to there, work. There's a game that does that very well, Rocket League, and maybe maybe you can attribute that to the high viewer count that they have on Twitch, but maybe not. But they have a function in game where you know it's Rocket League season six, and then if they're live, it'll say live. You click that link. Yeah, I think that's a opens huge. Up a browser. I mean, that's a huge reason I, I think that their esports scene in Rocket League is so good because look at the the player base of that game. It's not like it's 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 not what it was when it first came out. You know, there's I can name one squishy. That's that's it. It's not like right. it's – yeah, but, I mean, I think that's a huge reason. I mean, we brought it up today. They have Rocket League Overtime, which is a weekly hour-long show on Twitch that talks about the esports scene, the like professional Rocket League and Rocket League in general. And today it had, like, around 8,000 viewers, right? And I can promise you people see that in-game, and it's all pimped out through the in-game. And then, Brett, you brought up that you think there's going to be really good viewer counts because of the hype. And I wish there was a way, and maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'll start doing this like when I play Overwatch, I'll just casually ask people, I wonder what the hype is for someone who doesn't follow eSports. Mm, like, okay. is this hype just because our circle of friends are into eSports, so we just kind of get hyped for anything eSports related? You know what I'm saying? Or, Let me give you a quick story on this, because it's actually kind of directly related to what we're saying here. So this past weekend, for those of you that don't know, it was the Bali, which is like a big Indian festival, of right? Of course. So oh, cousins man. and family. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like Indian Christmas, okay? So it's kind of oh, a big yeah. deal. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> any, anyways. Um, you know Santa Claus? Don't come. No, no, of course we don't. So we had a bunch of family friends in they town. Have, all cousins, they have 200 had, Santa Clauses. Roughly right around there. So all the family, cousins, blah, 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 we're all in town. So one of them is exactly my age. Um, he lives in L.A. And I never played games with him growing up or anything, but we always hung out a lot, like, at all of our family functions. And so he moved to L.A. after college. So anyways, I asked him about it, because isn't that where the arena is over there? Like, the arena that they're making or something? Yeah, yeah I think so it's going to be in L.A. Yeah. He asked me about our podcast. So he's like, man, I see you've been pimping it out, like, talking to me about it, so he wanted me to talk to him about esports. Well, he doesn't play any games, okay? Isn't that always a lovely conversation? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it was like just explaining it to him to begin with, Uh, so 
you, you know, started it. off with Counter Strike and working my way around. A little and bit of me knew, dies every time. He knew like surprisingly nothing of like I was surprised about Overwatch. Like Counter Strike, I was surprised about too. I was like, you live in LA, they're not like pimping it out on the streets, like this is gonna be like a live venue over there. Um, none of that. And so like I feel like the publicity, you're right, needs to be just everywhere, like especially in game. In game is where you have your whole supposedly 35 million user base audience is there and it's not on there yet even if you're waiting till the launch of the league that also kind of feels late similar to the announcement of the league felt late I, and i i agree i think we've learned that there was a lot there was always a lot more behind the scenes going on than what we gave blizzard credit for but i mean i don't disagree with you i mean you're like you said your cousin lives in la they they have a team that should be blasted everywhere. I mean, hell, we live in Dallas. And oddly enough, I did hear them talking about it on the radio station the other day. Uh, that, like, isn't sports related. It was like a music station, and they brought it up uh, about the Dallas Overwatch team. But even then, that was like, just a couple of old dudes that I think were kind of making fun of it. Probably <laughs> saying of, something. Kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah. I think one guy was like, "Hey, like, no, guys, this is actually really cool. Like, I'm into this stuff." And they were like, well, "Whatever, nerd." But nonetheless, <laughs> so it was still on, right? But yeah, at I, least it's something. But you like, have again, to get those public. casual fans, and that's where I want to know: is there hype within the casual fan base of Overwatch for this? Because realistically, me and Brett, we love Overwatch, and we play it on like a weekly almost daily basis if we have the time. Anuj, I would say you're more of a casual where it's like you might pick it up if we force if you all, to if, play it. If all my friends are on, I'll like it on. But right. if I'm choosing yeah. the game, I'm probably not playing it. Uh, right, but so you would you consider yourself that casual fan? Yeah, and, yeah. and now, I know about the game. Like I, just, like, but, you, I know but enough like, about the game. Separate yourself the, uh... from an esports podcast, right? So now take Anuj, who's the casual fan who plays it when his friends want him to, and maybe he doesn't host an esports podcast and has to follow this stuff. Like, <laughs> would you even care that there's professional matches going on? I mean, honestly, no, but that's hard for me to like say that because I'm sure there are people more interested than me that would also consider themselves a casual fan, yeah. right? Like I of watch course. obviously a ton of Counter Strike, trying to watch more COD, but obviously you know, like my my heavy interest lies in in CS, so it's a little bit of a, a biased voice there, and I'll, I'll give them that. But I just, like I said, my biggest, my biggest worry is I just find the game hard to watch. Like I like the game; I have nothing against the game itself. I think it's a good game. It's like fun to play with your friends. Um, but you kind of like Richard Lewis mentioned, you know, like you have to see if it's like, you know, a blue shot coming out or a red shot coming out to like maybe know what what exactly that play was, and it's just a lot happening in a you know a tight space and so i hope they figure that out like i said we all have faith in alchemists to come through and if that's what you actually do alchemists tell us if we're wrong here um but to to make this like viewer friendly and you know easy for a casual fan to understand you guys are always going to understand it right like you know every character you play the game so a lot of it's going to be a lot of it's going to rely though on like the casting talent as well Right? How well can they explain the chaos? Because think of like a game like Dota 2, right? And I'll even go back to this latest international where like you and Brett kind of watched it for the first time. And if I recall, you both enjoyed it, right? Yeah. But it's like they yeah. have that noob stream where those casters break it down really well and they, they have those hints and everything. But even then, even if it's not just the noob stream, what they do amazing at in Dota. Those team fights in Dota, you even if you play, like you really don't know what's going on because there's just so much. But it's in the replays where they slow things down and those casters can explain what's going on and then get back to the action quick enough. Now, they already signed one of their casters, right? Or was it maybe a commentator? For Overwatch League? Yeah. I have no that, idea. Um, I mean, I would have to follow. assume you have the your ZP. I follow him stuff. on Twitter. Um and he announced it that he was going to be one was of the official. Monte like, Cristo? Damn, dude. Snoots, maybe? I don't know. Okay. Shoot. 
Oh, Not oh, yes. I know who. Oh, uh, man. I don't know his name. I'm a terrible esports podcast host, but I know who you're talking about. So, yeah, he's he's been hired on because I know he was making the move to L.A. Right. Um, right, right, right. But, yeah, I, I don't know how he is. So, you know, I'll, I'll have to see. I haven't I don't I don't watch any Overwatch now because it's in some ridiculous like I think it's Korean time zone half the time. If you want to watch good matches, I don't I don't even know when it's on now. So that's also a little bit of a yeah. problem feel is yeah everything yeah. prior to this league has been so unorganized for how to watch the game yeah but the team fights are insane because you know it's team fights are it's just 10 people in just one cluster ball of you know things going on so yeah i mean See, I, I have a question for you both so like Whoa. blizzard obviously knew this league was coming out for a long time, right? This is not something that they thought of six months into the game. And no, I, I think they always had it in their back pocket. Yeah, they, they had to, right? It's just too big of a production of what they're putting on for it not to be. So why did they not do a better job, or at least in my opinion, of like pimping out the game much earlier in this process? They didn't have to have their league. I'm not saying have the league ready six months into the game, but like even the way that they are showing games promoting you know other people that are hosting tournaments for your game like i just don't feel like they've done a lot to like you know make that a good viewer ex- viewing experience now and build off of it like they've just kind of let them run it the way they want to they haven't really worried about where to- tournaments are hosted so i just feel like they haven't done the greatest job of like well there's just setting it up there's multiple theories out there and i think only a few have been confirmed so this is just kind of me my opinion mostly right per now sources right per yeah sources. Per, my uh, my sources are telling me this um but it's the fact that blizzard purposely didn't allow a lot of these tournament organizers to pick up their game for because they knew this overwatch league was starting right it's the same reason why blizzard told players and teams hey don't sign these guys to really long contracts or don't sign them at all because we are going to start our own thing so don't get comfortable with our game and to a fault that kind of hurt its professional growth right like any new game is going to have issues but at this point you could have at least used like esl and I mean, E League did their thing, right? You could have used Dream all those that. guys yeah. to any one of these guys. They could have used anybody yeah. to like at least be like, "Hey, you know what? Run with it for the first year to be Dude, a guinea you pig, want. right?" Yeah. But I really think it was Blizzard told them we're going to do this league, and I think it scared them off in the in the sense of like, "Well, we're not going to spend this money then, right? We're not going to focus on that." when we have other games that we need to worry about because, and that's, that's my only thing because I mean, hell look at some of this, these games that ESL, um, ESL, what do you, I don't even know what to Google. Look at some of these games that ESL like rocks, right? They have uh vanglory. They have a vanglory league. They have all these paladins. Probably. Yeah, paladins. They host Gears paladin of War. tournaments. Gears of War, a For Honor. They have a For Honor Pro League for crying out loud. So (laughs) yes, yes. Yes. So you can't, you can't come at me and be like, well, it's just because Overwatch is difficult to watch and uh, doesn't, you know, they don't want to get involved with the pro scene because of whatever reason. No, they get in. This is esports, right? People get involved in everything. It it had to have came from the top. It had to have come from Blizzard telling them, hey. Like, don't do this. Don't. Not gonna... We suggest you don't do this. I yeah, would see what it's they should bad do. for business. If, if they're pimping out contenders or, you know, anything like that, it's bad for business, right? For, like, the in-game, the ultimate, like, Overwatch League. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I can see I think that. That, that's my theory. See, Blizzard should have been, like, in my opinion, they should have been, like, Hey guys, we are launching a league, but we're launching it in December 2017. So you got one year to like do what you want with it, make as much money as you can off of it. But we're coming with our own league ultimately, and and that's like our plan. But by not giving yeah. them a timeline or setting them up, nobody was willing to take the chance <laughs> on it, like you're saying, and and that's that's problematic. Like it just doesn't set the game up. Right. They have to be flawless 
come December time, right? There's no yeah. room for error, and no. there's no true guinea they, pig to go ahead of them. Yeah, and more to your point, Anuj, like it, they were dangling that carrot out for so long. I don't know about you, Tim, but I was about ready to be like, you know what? You've been saying this league's going to start for. We talked now. about it on and this you're not show like ten dates. times. Like, well, I think I'm, I'm almost out. This is already but like the no. third or fourth episode where we've solely dedicated to debate Overwatch League, <laughs> and it's because every yep. time something comes out, we always have this discussion off show, and we're like, you know what? Let's save it because this is a good discussion because everyone has an opinion on it on how they feel like it's going to work out, how it was handled coming to, and just what is Blizzard going to do with it. It's the complete unknown. And it's like to what Anuj just said, there's there are, it has to be flawless because there is no other way there's no uh, no one they can there's blame no but themselves. Other, well no other way to grow, right? They're the, they're yeah. only allowing themselves to make this great game grow. And, and, and think so. about it. If Overwatch League fails, if Blizzard, the people who made the game, if this league cannot succeed, and then all of a sudden say they're like, oh, um, just kidding. This isn't working out. ESL, you can go ahead and do your pro league now for this. Well, gonna do that? yeah, they're going to be like, no, no. You guys couldn't even make this work out, right? You guys had yeah. millions of dollars to invest into this. And every resource available, you had every line of code to fix this game's stat-keeping ability, and yet you couldn't do it. So if this but fails, it d- then it's, it's done. It's Don't done. you think so, there's like yeah. a bigger harm that could be done in the big picture? And again, what Richard Lewis mentioned, which I thought was a great point, is they have to succeed. Who, For which, the sake of esports, they have to. Well, venture capitalists okay. to come in and want to put $20 million up front in another video game if this fails. Like, I know there'll be other games that probably draw people's attention, but don't yeah. you think there'll be so much scrutiny and Overwatch will be referenced every time if it doesn't do well? Like, well, remember Overwatch League? Like, you had to pay $20 million and these guys made nothing off of it. Like, it's just – they just have a lot of pressure, and it's, it's a lot of pressure – to make esports right and it's not in a bad place right now but this could scare a, a lot of people away from it especially with all the celebrities involved right like yeah. how many celebrities do you see involved in this right now it's crazy yeah maybe maybe i kind of differ there i mean if, if this doesn't work i don't feel like it's gonna like people are gonna it, the people are gonna invest in the next big thing more to your more to your point tim you know these are investors or they're, they're gunslingers I mean, if if there's something big that has a lot of hype uh, surrounded around it, I, I don't think it's going to scare them off. But you know, I think twenty million dollars Overwatch League fails. I don't see him investing in any other Overwatch project, or maybe even Blizzard project for that matter. But maybe another company or another game. You know, I don't, I don't see it being an issue there. Uh, I, I don't know. I maybe could not I could see it. Like, I could see, I could it see it how they saying like. You know, screw you, Blizzard. You know, we just invested twenty dollars. We're we're not going to do anything else with you ever again. That's the counter to Richard Lewis's like whole argument because that's his biggest fear, right? As a proponent of esports, his biggest fear is that Valve truly f's this up, and you don't see big investments coming in. You don't see people willing to take Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, I'm sorry. I'm so used to Valve effing things up. I use them (laughs) as an example um, at CS:GO Dev. So yeah, like if Blizzard messes this up. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, I I feel like it would scare people away. It would scare me away. I, if I if I was investing that kind of money, it's just a lot of money that they're asking for. So Blizzard got theirs right. Like at the end of the day, if this fails, Blizzard's walking out with what two hundred, four hundred million dollars. You know, come the end of the day, here they're in a pretty good spot either way. It's it's the investors that are going to take the hit, and ultimately, you know, they're the ones that are going to matter for the long term growth of this sport comes to sponsors, investors, like these are the people that need to get involved if we want to see the money grow to like Dota 2 kind of level money. Yeah, and I mean, I I think I lean more towards Anuj uh, in this one to where if this does fail, the ramification of what this could have for a, a this type of league in esports, I think it it would it would definitely push all of it way back because that's what we were saying up. at the beginning. That's what we were saying at the beginning of this, right? Is that 
at least for me, like I love the fact that these are city based teams. I like the fact that they're changing their organization names. Um, I understand people's reasoning. I know Sir Scoots and uh, Miss Harvey, Brett, you were saying we're having issues on Twitter that, well, well, why can't Cloud9 just keep their team name? That's ridiculous that you're making these organizations. Well, because realistically, these organizations are ownership groups, and you mm-hmm. don't name teams after your ownership group. Right. Sorry. They, they want a level That's... playing field. If I'm if I'm investing twenty million dollars, and you know I'm getting in this league, I don't want to be in one region in Dallas where, you know, Cloud Nine has a big, a big influence here, right. and you know they're they're typically American American uh, American team. They have a they have a, a cult following. Um, I don't want to already start off right with a disadvantage. But even then, like, I so feel think like of, a big part of their revenue is going to be merchandise sales, right? So I would assume. But I think mean, of it like even in that case, though, right? We're t- we're just talking about the big investors, right? We're talking about the twenty million dollar investors, but the people mm-hmm. behind some of those investors are Cloud Nine and NRG and Immortals, actual esports teams. So if this fails. They're going to look if they ever if they ever get approached again to do another league like this, they would be like, I, I could see where they're like, no, like we've already done this once. It doesn't work in esports. Like what makes you think Cloud9 can make it work again in the next sport? And again, you, you, Brett's right in the sense that, yeah, it's kind of a game by game basis. Yeah. I just think it, it, it puts a different fear in the back of their mind. That they it puts a bad taste prior. in their mouth. Yep. If exactly. it fails, I don't. I don't think it will fail to the point where. I think they'll see their money back. Is is what I think. Mm. Maybe not. Yeah. Not obviously right away, but I think they all knew that going into it as well. Um, I think Blizzard's in this for the long haul. I think all the people who bought teams are in it for the long haul, and I think they all knew that getting into it. I these you don't just put twenty million down because you like the idea. You know, like all these guys have done their research. It's not like Blizzard was trying to pull one over on anyone. Yeah, these are savvy. These are savvy investors that have that are, that are already in structured leagues. So that don't know a lot about esports, though. These investors don't know a but, lot about but esports. But we just they, said that Cloud 9s getting into this, right? Like Cloud Nine, Immortals, and there's a, the, some other guys, esports franchise are getting into them. So even even en- not knowing, even Envious, who yeah, we know they know a lot about esports. Envious is not the one putting up the money. They all have backers. Like they all have backers. It's not but Cloud9 they're, investing $25 million. They're they're trusting these organizations to run with the branding under their brand. But like Marshawn Lynch, Jennifer Lopez, the, all these people that are getting involved, these are the ones you have to be afraid of, of them not wanting to take those chances and putting up three, four, five million next time individually. Cloud9 and all of them will stay invested. It's what they do. You know, this, this is like their world. So if mm. this fails, I don't think it necessarily kills off Cloud9. It might hurt them in a financial sense, but it's the investors that are, are the bigger issues. Right. You hear that, Alchemist? Don't ruin JLo for us, all right? Hey, JLo don't brings money to the table. J-Lo. We'll take we'll take yeah. Mia Khalifa. We'll take anybody at this <laughs> point that's got some money, okay? This is a family show, Anoush. All right. She's family oriented. <laughs> yeah, one could say that. Saw one when she really uh, was oriented to her mom. So, <laughs> you know. Oh gosh. No, I, I, I think bottom line is this could go either way. In the worst way, right? Like if if it succeeds, it could change the landscape of all future esports, right? Mm-hmm. If this yeah. succeeds, you could see Valve all of a sudden being like, uh, you yeah. know what? <laughs> maybe yeah. uh mean- maybe we should start caring about how Counter Strike is handled a little more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean if this thing succeeds, it's like, oh, one season please, can please succeed in the game. Give Valve that kind of you know, like <laughs> Hey man. Until they have shown Valve no did way. say no. that they are going to announce the next major by the middle of next month. Mm. So finally, if you see if you see a pig flying near your window at work, don't freak out. <laughs> it's just Valve yeah. actually announced a major before uh, before the next one. We can actually schedule something in advance. And then on the opposite side of the scale, if it fails, you're going to have a line of people saying they told you so. 
I don't want to be one of those people, though. I, I really don't. don't. Think, I don't really? think anyone really does. I mean, even Richard Lewis and said, like, yeah, I'm not a think... fan of it, but I absolutely, for for the sake of esports, I think everyone wants to see this succeed. I don't play That's League of Legends at all. I'm not a fan of League of Legends. Not a fan of Riot. But I like seeing it succeed, right? I like the yeah, fact that Yeah, I like seeing people... these guys do well. I like these yeah. guys get to play video games for a living. Like, it's our, it's like all of our dreams, our childhood dreams, you know? We get to see it through these guys and see it happen. And, I mean, I want to see any eSport game, except for Flair Honor. I really didn't like that game. But I would like to see any eSport game really succeed and, and take off. And that includes, you know, obviously Overwatch. Yeah, I'm I'm raising a Rocket League pro right now. Getting in on that. Yeah. Well, it's mm-hmm. really <laughs> so we can blame you and my He's teammate's like, a four-year-old. <laughs> He's already got the trash talk down, so. I'm not going to lie. Step four-year-olds one. are probably better than me at that game. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Truth. Um, I mean, any any final thoughts? And, oh, I mean, one thing, though, since we're just on it, I was going to have it in E-Luke, but, e, or E-News, but I guess it doesn't matter. Um, we have a couple more team announcements right now. Los Angeles, which, correct me if I'm wrong, was that the team that was rumored to be Titans? Spartans? Oh, Somebody was yeah. Spartan. That was supposed to be LA, yeah, because remember we were talking about USC yeah. and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, well, they are not that. They are LA Valiant. Looks kind of cool. Okay. LAV. Yeah, sure. Lav. Um, yeah. And then... Um, what, what team, uh, you know, I looked at their logo and I thought, hmm, that looks familiar. You have <laughs> Boston announcing their team, Boston Uprising. Might as well be Boston, the center ring. Yeah, that's yeah, I know <laughs> Boston. Team. <laughs> so if, if you haven't, if you're a listener of the show, if you go to our Twitter at the center ring, uh, I tweeted out something that's pretty humorous, but their logo looks strangely familiar. I'm not saying that they even know we exist because they probably don't. But damn. <laughs> it's pretty pretty damn close. Uh, hey, while you're there, hit that follow button if you don't mind. That's right. Hit that follow button. Hit that retweet on that one, why don't you? We don't we don't ask for them a lot. No, but it would, it would we be don't. Nice. We don't. I don't like groveling, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Follow us on Twitter and retweet it. Uh, they never even responded. You know why? Because they're scared. That's oh, why. yeah. They see that they, Adidas lawsuit coming in right know, now. They <laughs> know. They know what they did. All right? They know that they're they already, saw that. You you're know what about they to did? see a new mock-up come out tomorrow. They're like, looking for they a probably Googled, suggested logo. They, they Googled eSports podcast and saw us being third on the list and was like, dang, I like that logo. Let's get that and logo. Second. second. Oh, second now. Whoa. Dang, it's moving on up. Whoa, whoa, right. whoa. So, no, their their logo is is really <laughs> it is very i mean i know we don't have the most original but geez that's that's like the same thing oh well i uh the 76 skin though looks pretty dope so i'll give them that yeah. the skins do look pretty cool in general though like all the skins that they've been showing along with the logos I, i've been liking that i think yeah. they, i think they all look good i agree i agree so we'll see uh more more teams to come I think China's Shanghai Dragon. China number. They're China. gonna be called number one. <laughs> <laughs> number China one. number one. Uh, well, that would Seoul? be how awesome. Would that Seoul, be? So I think announced that they're gonna announce their team here shortly, as soon as they announce their full roster. I think they're doing it all at once: is announcing their roster and the team name. So mm-hmm. we'll keep an eye, and that would be awesome. But I think with all these very serious generic names, I think that's oh, no, you the can't hopes are out there. <laughs> You can't have a funny one. <laughs> no. It's got to be super serious. Super. Fuel. We're esports. We're very serious. Um, all right. Let's the get into fuel. some to some e-news and wrap this piece up. Wait a minute. Is that music getting us into e-news? Production value, man. Production oh value. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love it. Uh, let's see here. Looking up in CSGO, we mentioned DreamHack Denver actually wrapped up last weekend, meaning maybe uh, some DreamHack Austin announcement maybe hopefully please 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 i don't know what the hell dreamhack is doing but man 
They even responded. They responded to me on Twitter one time. They're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to announce them soon. And that was like a month ago. Come on, dude. Announce this. We got to make plans. People got things to do. Um, Anyway, so DreamHack Denver, that did happen last weekend. First time ever. Screenshots looked pretty good. The pictures looked cool, I guess. Um, In CSGO, Cloud9 ended up beating Big. So they ended up taking first. Renegades took third. And so did Mouse Sports. They, they shared third and fourth. Yeah, they beat a couple of good European teams to get to the finals. You know, they, they beat Mouse Sports and then big in the finals and, and played well. It was nice to see the the new Cloud9, the new and improved Cloud9, um, if you're, working well together. You know, they looked good. If you're going to be you a know? good team, you got to beat those smaller tournaments. A good weekend for Cloud9. Overall, um, Speaking of, Cloud9 also defeats PSG Esports in the North American Invitational and Rocket League. Awesome stuff, man. I love, I recently, I don't know what it is, but like the professional, the pro Rocket League scene has got me hooked. Th- those matches are a lot of fun to watch. Um, and those, and those interviews are funny too. Doesn't help Squishy. that Cloud9 dominates. Like... Wait, am I missing out on this? I need to, I need to get in on this. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Rocket there's... League. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I catch player. it here and there when it's on TV and stuff, but not... Yeah, it's, uh, it's good so stuff. The the best player in, in Rocket League, Squishy, the interviews, it's like Popovich, uh, the coach of the Spurs in, in in basketball. You don't know what to expect when you interview him. He, he's either going to be, like, super sarcastic or he's just going to be, like, just minimal answer. Just And I think Squishy does the same thing. He, he's doing it to just kind of be funny, but... You could just tell the the interviewers are just like so uncomfortable. It's hilarious. And uh, in Smash at Denver, you had Hungrybox beating Mango in the finals, and in Smash U, you had Zero beating Salem. So go figure, Zero winning a Smash U tournament. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, I know. Does anybody else ever win those things? Uh, once in a while, you know, once in a while, not very often, but they do. Uh, in Dota, tomorrow, the ESL 1 Hamburg. That is a major that starts up tomorrow through the 29th. Um, I think you're going to see Liquid win that. I don't, I, don't see, I don't see how they've slowed down since the International, and they, they just recently won. They um, won again, yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't see how Liquid can not come out on top of that, but you never know. And uh, what yeah, else? Here? Uh, COD, uh, Call of Duty. They are Activision, I guess should say. They released details of the new Call of Duty World League coming up here. A lot of format changes going on. So a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. So I'll just kind of quickly run down some of the big bullet points here. They are creating a amateur level division. The prize pool for the year is said to be around four point two million dollars. The Call of Duty World League will now split into two divisions of eight teams that complete com, that compete rather. Words are hard. In land settings, in two separate stages: stage one and stage two. So basically, qualifying teams will compete in an MLG arena in Ohio, and then the least, at least twice a season, for a spot in the playoffs. So you have all that, and then you have. The bottom set, so you have, like, that's, I guess, stage one. And then stage two is the teams that couldn't qualify will automatically be put into kind of that amateur league and try to compete their way back up. I like it. So, also a big um, signing here today. Uh, Echo Fox actually officially announced their team today. So that was that was pretty good. And it looks like they're going to have one of the stronger teams, just according to what I've been reading per sources. But they signed uh, Facento, Saints, Assault, and Gunless. Um, I think Gunless is probably the biggest superstar of the group, but they've all had their moments. I believe it was what um, Saints was like won the first major tournament for the last Call of Duty. So, yeah, they got a pretty powerful squad. And from what people are at least saying, that they will be super competitive in the scene. Plus, I think what they're they're doing the land tournament here in Dallas, December eighth. 8th to the 10th. Okay, second weekend in December. So we will actually... I'm excited for this to kick off here. We'll probably all be there. Oh, eighth, yeah, for sure. 8th through the 10th. So if you are going to the the MLG Call of Duty event there uh, in Dallas in December, let us know because we will definitely 
be there. And obviously, we'll talk about more of that coming up, though, when the leak starts. I mean, really, coming up here in the next month or two, December is going to be a busy month in esports, which oh, is yeah. weird because normally it's not. Like, normally from Thanksgiving to about mid-January, there is nothing to discuss in esports. And yet now you have... Two... COD, you have Overwatch, Overwatch League, League the Major is going to be approaching. Yeah, you'll have the CS Major qualifiers going on all at the same time, so it's going to be fun. All of a sudden, a lot going a, on. Good holiday season. Awesome. Happy Diwali and Merry Christmas. Yeah, sure, man. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Happy holidays. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Episode 79 is done. It's in the books. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you skipped around or listened all the way through, all the same, I love you and appreciate it. Let us know on Twitter how you like the show. How did it sound for our first complete remote episode where no one, uh, we're all in our own living areas. Kind of nice. But again, that is at the center ring on Twitter, our website, tcr.gg. Uh, whatever you do, like, review us on iTunes, whatever you have to do to make sure the show lives on into perpetuity and yeah that's it we'll be back next week we'll talk some epicenter for counter-strike and whatever else is going on in the esports world until next time for brett and the nuge i'm tim we'll see ya